Hello, Greg Allison from Green Greg's Garden and Worm Farm on a frosty morning checking my greenhouse with no heat to see how it's doing. It's 28 degrees outside. Let's see how the greenhouse looks. We're going to go back there. Look, frost out here. That's my van, one of them. This is my truck with supplies to build a solar, uh, a solar heater system for my greenhouse. And some inside the truck, of course. My old 60, excuse me, 76 model C30. Ah, that's an old 10 I gotta work on. And my cooler, walk-in cooler to be. And all these flats I just washed yesterday. A lot of things to wash when you're running a farm. Anyway, I decided last night that my greenhouse has been thermally performing few degrees above ambient so it's supposed to get down to about 28 and that's where it's at by the way my worm harvester a rotary trommel my log bar yeah things are a little messy and say so, hello rabbits hello babies well Here we are, and another rabbit hutch right there. So we're going to see how the greenhouse performs. And I've been quite worried about these cold temperatures. You can see I have plastic flaps that are adjustable now over these future swamp cooler windows. Lord knows I don't need swamp coolers right now. Put the kerosene down. I hear water running, of course. Now, right now I got a condensate problem, but I'm figure out how to fix that up. See, I've got quite a few plants set out now. And voila! It is 38 degrees in here. <laughs> I did not need to run my big expensive shop, Peter. That's what I suspected because guess what? I haven't seen yet it get below 38 in this greenhouse yet. That's what I was noticing. That is what I thought this water is holding it. This greenhouse has been going about uh, in the daytimes below ambient maybe it would be not below uh, eight degrees above ambient temperatures but I had noticed it seemed to be locking at 38 degrees and the part of all the mess in here we're still the construction site indeed 38 degrees that's awesome I love it the water works there's almost 5,000 gallons of water in this greenhouse but you know the water is a ratio the size of the overall greenhouse is not that big now I do have, like I said, a little bit of a condensate problem I got to work on. Got a lot of fresh little lettuce starts in here. These are all DIY homemade boards. A lot cheaper than buying a uh, some of these other board options. I almost got this greenhouse filled up. I think I got enough lettuce already started to uh, well not to fill the greenhouse, but fill up this one aquaponics bed. Water's still flowing nicely. Of course, it's 38 degrees in here. Actually, my outdoor system, the water will run till 19 degrees. I don't know what it would do in here, but the lettuce can survive freezing temperatures. It's pretty obvious it's going to take more than a 28 degree temperature to get this place to freezing. And when I build that solar hot water heater, this place should be doing just fine. So, okay. My earlier fears and panics about... Uh, the uh, emergency getting cold have been something I hadn't worried, did not need to worry about so much. Now, yeah, it's going to get colder this winter, but we've had a very, very cold autumn. So there is a kerosene heater with a little fan on top, so it'll make a hot spot on the roof. And uh, of course, I got that shop heater. That shop heater was what really heats it up back here. So, what do we know? We now know that this place is pretty thermally stable with all this water in here. 
So we proved it, we looked at it, it's 28 degrees outside and 38 inside. The greenhouses will in general stay a little bit warmer inside than outside just because uh, it's like being in another climatic zone for every layer of plastic. And one of the things I plan to do is add two befores across here then go across here with them uh, so I can actually roll the plastic here across there and make this a mini greenhouse inside here. That's my approach rather than having a double layer up here. Everybody goes, why don't you put a double layer up there and inflate it? Well, it was hard getting this big piece of plastic up on this greenhouse. And uh, I'm glad I'm not going for a double layer. But that's my approach. So, uh, and it appears to uh, be panning up. This greenhouse has been pretty tough. We've had some winds here. And I'm not having any issues so far. Uh, I do have a risk. With these trees back here behind the place, as you can see, they look almost like they're straight overhead, even though they start about mm, 30 feet over that way, maybe 30 or 40 feet. But the trees are about 90 feet tall. So uh, I have to pray that I don't have a problem with that. But in any event, uh, all seems to be working well. The water's flowing, and the lettuce is starting to grow. In. Water's flowing, great lettuce is growing. All this is all still new starts. A lot more to go out, a lot of work going on in here, but anyway, yeah, it's kind of scraggly looking less. I gotta get my nitrate levels up higher, but uh, uh, I just keep feeding the fish and hope they keep growing. I don't know that we'll have a, a good lettuce production in the six weeks that would be typical simply because uh, we have lower nitrates. You don't want to start a system, uh, aquaponic system out too hard, because if you start an aquaponic system out too hard, where the uh, you're trying to get the nitrates up immediately uh, what's going to happen is you're going to have ammonia spikes or maybe a nitrate spike that's going to kill the fish so you got to kind of sneak up on it you got to gradually increase it so the bacterial will show up and increase in population correspondingly if you throw too many fish in at once everything dies so uh, that's the approach but we've got a fair number of fish but they're all still babies up there and we've kind of hit a season, that's about all I can buy. Maybe there's more goldfish, but if I get more, it may be these that are a few weeks old. We'll eat them. So, we don't that. Uh, so, that's the challenge. Anyway, and uh, that's the challenge of starting up an aquaponics system is you got to do it gradually and take care of what you do. Anyway, uh, this is quite a fun experiment I'm doing here. And yeah, it's still an experiment. Uh, all aquaponics is still experimental in reality, but it, uh, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of work, a lot of work, but uh, it's very interesting. So back out here, take in my kerosene, and we'll walk back out of here. But in any event, uh, aquaponics has the advantage, though, of being a natural way to grow stuff without chemicals, and that's why I like it. Now, you saw just a moment ago, that I do live in a suburb. I shot you, I gave you a scene from my front yard so you can see that I do live in a suburb. And yet, back here I've got a log barn, a house, a little bit of woods, got a garden. Uh, you know, I've got 1.9 acres here. You can see some garden beds. Uh, they're in ill repair right now simply because I've been so busy building this greenhouse and running a power grid defense conference and, many, and working a lot of overtime this last spring and summer that uh, the garden did not get the attention it's had before. Hopefully this next year I can make up for that. We still have some beautiful fall colors and when the sun pops up over the horizon those will be real pretty. But uh, a lot of work here, a lot of work. In any event, if you've not already subscribed to my channel, please do and bang the bell for updates. I'll be putting a lot of updates on how to do aquaponics, how to grow microgreens, how to raise worms, and eventually I'll do some uh, gardening, organic gardening, raised bed gardening, I'll cover that. I'm going to cover uh, eventually rabbit husbandry uh, and how to build things, like my barn, which I'm actually still working on. Uh, greenhouses, I'll cover this topic. And I do have some little short videos and a lot of still pictures of a lot of these other construction phases. And uh, my worm farm is mostly back here in these woods. We'll get to them later. It's kind of neat to live in a basically a subdivision. My orchard is through here. Oh yeah, I got a lot of weeds pulling there. And uh, so I've got an orchard and many other things here. 
and have a demanding day job. What this proves is you can do a lot, but we're coming into an age where you're going to have to grow your own food. I'm thoroughly convinced of that because food prices are going to spike because of the climate. Everybody's thinking about getting warmer. Well, if it gets warmer, you still got to worry about it, but we're in a grand sort of minimum, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to get cold for quite a while. So uh, that's going to produce a lot of crop growing challenges. And uh, I'm saying, even if that weren't the case, if you grow your own, you know what you're getting. And you're a lot better off knowing what you're feeding yourself for your own health and what you're feeding your kids, your loved ones. So I highly advise you, grow your own food. And I'm going to cover a whole lot of how to do that. So we're, a, I'm a, we're this is a budding channel. We're still just getting started. And most of my talks are introductory, but I'm going to get a lot more in depth. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Have a great day.